Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about cleaning up your family tree. We're going to talk about why you might want to do that. I'll talk about some different ways that we can do that and then I'll show you how you can use some of the tools available to you to make it a little bit easier to have a clean family tree. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's talk first about some of the reasons why you might want to have a clean family tree. One of the, the really important things is that the cleaner your tree, the more improved your record hinting and your searching process is going to be. So for example, if I have a bunch of different dates for an individual and a bunch of different locations and I'm not really clear on what the accurate information is, if I put those all in, that's going to confuse some of those record hinting algorithms. It's going to confuse some of the search algorithms. And so the cleaner that data is, the more improved, the more clean, the more accurate those, um, those hints and those search results are going to be. A lot of other ways that that's going to show up, but that is for me a really important reason. It also just improves my genealogy process. Um, my own cr personally crafted searches are going to be better the cleaner my data is. It's going to make more sense to me. Consistency across your tree also means you're going to be able to more quickly spot when you do have errors or duplicates or other problems with the data in your family tree. If I get in the habit of putting in a dozen different names for a person or three or four different birth dates for a person, even though they can only have been born once, um, then when there are actually errors in my tree or in my data, it's a little bit more difficult to catch those or to spot those. So when I'm consistent about recording a single birth date and place and then mapping all of my sources to that and making sure that I've put some notes in there about why I came to the conclusion I came to regardless of what the records say. Well, then when I add a parent and their birth date is wildly um, inconsistent with what it would need to be in order to have a child born at the time they were born, I'm able to quickly spot that. But when I have three or four different birth dates, sometimes um, my brain will just go to writing it off as an inconsistency in the data rather than, than an actual error in the data. I hope that makes sense. That's just consistency across your tree means you're always doing the same thing the same way and that you're keeping your facts and information clean so that you can spot those errors more readily. Another reason it's really important and becoming even more so to have a clean tree or to have clean data in your tree is because then comparing trees can be more automated uh, when that information is standardized. This is particularly important when we talk about DNA. In DNA, uh, one of the features is you get a match list, which means we compare your DNA to the other, as of now, three million people and growing in the database. And anybody that matches you, we put on a DNA match list for you. Well, what that means is that we then compare your tree to their tree and we'll give you hints about who your common ancestors might be. Well, if your data, if you've got a dozen different names and different birth dates and different information in your tree and they have a similar situation, comparing that data is not going to happen. Um, and so you're going to miss out on some of the automated features that are available because of that. So the, again, the cleaner your data is, the more likely you are to be able to utilize some of those automated features. Those are just three reasons why having a clean tree is beneficial. I can think of probably a half dozen more um, smaller reasons, but those I think all kind of encompass the major categories. So there are some ways to clean your tree, um, kind of like um, housekeeping. I've been thinking about some analogies this morning. Housekeeping is the one that comes to mind. I can go in and I can clean my house for 15 minutes a day, or I can go in once a week and spend a couple of hours. So you kind of decide how you want to do that. The other thing that kind of falls into that analogy is um, I can clean things up as I go and make sure that you know as I use something in the kitchen I put it back or you know as I get out of bed I make it whatever the case may be which means that then I have less to do when it comes to cleaning stuff up on the back end similar to our family trees you can follow the standards as you go so that then you don't have a bunch of stuff to clean up later but even if you do you can set aside an hour or two to do that little spring cleaning and get it all cleaned up 
So let me just review some standards really quickly. There are genealogical standards as to how data should be entered. And the ancestry system follows those standards, which means that, again, the hinting, the searching, the matching, all of that is going to happen um, with the assumption that you are also following those standards. Now, we've done some things in our tree system recently to help facilitate this a little bit better. One of those has to do with dates. It used to be that you could enter your dates however you wanted to enter them. Well, now, when you start to enter a date, we actually give you a suggestion for the format for that date. And the genealogical standard for date formats is day, month, year. Um, and we, we use the three uh, letter abbreviation for the month. We put all four digits of the year in that field. So that's a, just a simple way to make sure that your data stays clean and formatted and standardized. Names. For names, you always record women with their maiden name. And if you don't know their maiden name, you leave it blank. Now, one of the challenges is that when you're adding people into your tree through records, the information on the records is not always standardized. The information on the records is however the record keeper chose to enter it. It could just be a year for the age. It could be the woman with her married name. It could be the woman with her second or third husband's name, right? So, so how the information comes in from the records doesn't matter. What matters is how you standardize it in your tree. So if I add a woman into my tree from a census with her husband and her children, it's going to put in her married name. So it's up to me to make sure that I enter her maiden name or leave that field blank if I don't yet know her maiden name. The other, the, the one small variation on that standard is if you don't like a blank field, you can add five underscores. And I do that, that's the standard I've chosen to follow. In the surname field for all women where I do not know their maiden name, I just put in five underscores. Creates a nice little blank line and those characters don't interfere with any of the hinting or the searching. I do a similar thing with first names. So for example, if I found an obituary that lists, um, uh, a woman's married name, so it says the surviving daughters are, and it lists them by their married names. I now know the surname of the husband, but I might not yet know his first name. So I'll go in and enter a husband with a five underscore blank first name and then the surname so that I have um, a path for my research to take. So names, that's really critical. Places. Now here in the US, the standard is you put the city or town, the county, the state, and the country. In other countries, the jurisdictions are arranged a little bit differently. Instead of states, they might have provinces or counties. Um, instead of cities or towns, they might have parishes. Whatever the case may be, um, you just start with the smallest jurisdiction and you work your way up to the country level. So that's how we enter places in a standardized format. Uh, now, one, again, one of the challenges is not all records have that kind of standard. The records were not created for genealogical purposes. Not a single record we use um, other than, than trees and published genealogies, census records, immigration, military, none of those records were created for genealogical purposes. So we have to take the data that comes in from those records, and it's our job as we enter that information into our tree to standardize it to the genealogical format. So this this place name um, authority, Ancestry tries to help you with some drop downs, but um, it is not that location dictionary is not exhaustive, and sometimes there's some variants that you need to account for in your tree. But if you're consistent, um, your data will be cleaner, it will be easier to use some of the automated features. Now, some people want to include additional information in location fields, things like the names of the cemetery or the hospital or the address where an event occurred or where they were living. And that's great, but that needs to be included in the description level of that location, not in the place level of that location. Again, standardization um, is, really, is really important to keep your data clean and to keep some of those automated tools functioning correctly. So, a couple of other ways to clean your family tree. One is remove any unnecessary alternate facts. One of the things that happens is, again, every time you add a record to your tree, you're taking information from a, a record that was created for non-genealogical purposes, you're importing it into your tree or attaching it as a source in your tree, 
And one of the things that that sometimes does is it creates unnecessary alternate facts. If you already know, for example, that your grandfather was born on the 22nd of February, um, you know, 24th of February, 1922, if the census says he's about eight years old in 1930, it's going to create an alternate birth date of about 1922. But you don't need that about 1922 alternate birth date in there because you already know when he was born. And again, a person can only be born one time in one place. And so what we're doing is we're collecting sources or evidence that support the fact that we know when and where he was born. And that piece of evidence just supports it. Now, sometimes we may have evidence that absolutely contradicts it. Conflicting evidence is a very real thing in genealogy. You may have a birth record that says one thing and a census record that says another and a military record that says something else and a death record that says something else. And they all may be consistent or inconsistent amongst themselves. You're not gonna add four different birth facts. You're gonna add one birth fact and map all four of those sources to that. Now, one of the things you might need to do then is to add some descriptory descriptions, some notes or comments about why you came to the conclusion you came to, but removing those unnecessary facts, like I said, helps clean up your tree, helps you be able to see the real errors a little bit more quickly. Another thing you might wanna look for or consider doing is going through and removing duplicate individuals. One of the things, again, that sometimes happens when we add a record, like a census record, for example, if the computer can't exactly match up the names of the people on the census record with the names of the people on your tree, it will just add a new child because it doesn't recognize that it's one of those other children. Now, in that merge process, we've actually given you a way to control that, but if you haven't paid attention to that previously, you could have some duplicate individuals. Lots of different reasons that happens. Sometimes it's because they were going by their first name in one census and their middle name in another census, or they're listed by their initials, or their birth year is totally off. The census taker made them five years older or seven years younger or something. And so the computer can't tell that it's the same person. It creates a duplicate. So really easy to just go through and merge those duplicates on your tree. You're going to, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> excuse me. Um, you're going to want to um, pull up the profile of one of those duplicate individuals and then under tools, we give you the option or the ability to merge two individuals together. Now be really careful with that power. Um, you can, uh, you need to make sure that they really are the same person before they, before you merge them. There are times in families where they will have a child by a name and then if that child dies they will name another child that same thing and so sometimes they really are two separate individuals. Sometimes you have siblings who are close in age or maybe even twins where the names are so similar that sometimes the computer thinks they're the same person but they're not really the same person. So you need to just be aware of what's going on in your tree and in your family enough and in the records enough to make some of those decisions. And if you don't have enough evidence to come to a conclusion, find more evidence before you uh, make some of those decisions. Another thing you might wanna consider as a way to clean up your tree is to remove any unnecessary multiple relationships. Now, I know that some of you um, who have living family members who, you know, maybe you have a biological family and an adopted family, and both of those families are significant to you, or maybe you were raised by a step parent and you want to acknowledge the fact in your family tree that yes, this was my father, but this is the man who raised me. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it does create some um, confusion in the tree and in the way that your tree view shows up. Sometimes it'll look like you've got duplicate individuals when really you don't have duplicate individuals. What you have is multiple relationships and graphically displaying that in a tree format gets a little tricky and so sometimes the person will show up in two places on the tree because of those multiple relationships. I think that there are some circumstances where those multiple relationships are unnecessary. You know, um, it, just because somebody has stepchildren doesn't mean you need to allocate every one of those children to that individual as a stepchild unless you're intentionally trying 
to tell a piece of the family story. I personally tell that family story in the notes. You know, if a, if a woman comes along and you know raises her husband's children with his first wife, I make sure that I make a note on her profile that states that you know the children were between the ages of six months and and 13 years old when she married their father, and that she raised them, and that she was a part of their life. Um, and for me, that's how I've chosen to do that, so that I don't have some of those multiple relationship confusions happening in my tree. You choose what works for you, but be consistent. That's uh, my best piece of advice. Another way to clean up your tree is to make sure, make sure that your sources are attached to your facts and vice versa. So in my uh, online tree, the easiest way to do that is just to go into the profile of an individual on your tree and you can click any source and it will show you exactly which facts in your tree it is supporting. You can also click any fact in your tree and it will show you which sources support that fact. And if you have any fact in your tree that is not supported by a source, you might wanna consider either removing it or going out and looking specifically for facts that prove that particular source. So here's a great example. I have a marriage for my great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother here. And according to this, the only fact I have supporting that is the 1900 census. Well, it's true, the 1900 census does list how many years a couple has been married, but I have an exact date and location, which means that information came from somewhere. It either came from somewhere or it was made up and I need to remove it, one of the two, right? And so one of the ways to clean up my tree is to check these facts and say, where did this date come from? Well, it's a Wayne County, Ohio marriage. It's got a specific date. I need to go look for a specific Ohio marriage record that is going to prove or disprove that information so that I can then attach that as another source. Um, and so making sure that all of the facts have attached sources and all of the sources have attached facts. Sometimes we add a source and then realize, oh, that was not the right person. And so we delete information from our tree and we end up with little straggling pieces of information, straggling facts that aren't really, don't really pertain to our person or straggling sources that aren't really about our person. And so going through and cleaning those up periodically is important, again, to keeping our data clean, but also to helping us continue to build that family tree and to continue to do that research. And then another way to clean up your family tree is just to make notes to yourself. Make notes, There's we've given you a lot of different ways to do this, so just briefly, um, here under tools, you have, view, you have notes and comments. Uh, you can also show all your research tools and then all those research tools show up here in the header. Um, and so I can click view notes and you'll notice here I do tons of notes on every person in my tree. My tree is public, but the notes are private. They're my research notes. So it's information about who I'm working with and what I'm working with so that I know, um, you know what my next research step is or what research I've already done. I transcribe all the records I find. I go super overboard, um, but for me, that's how my process best works. I use that notes field really extensively. You also have the ability to leave comments on your tree. And comments are public, which means anybody that comes to my public tree to view this individual will see the comments that I have left about him. I can also then, on any single fact in my tree, I can add some descriptory information. This is where you're going to want to put the name of the hospital, the name of the cemetery, the address where they live. This is where information from the census oftentimes gets um, automatically copied over. But if I want to make a more detailed note so that others can see the information about why I came to the conclusion that this is his birth date or you know what I know about that wedding and how and when and where it took place, that's the place to add that information. Again, it's not just about cleaning up your data, it's about making that data useful to you and to other family members. It's about making sure that you can continue to climb your family tree and, and I say this all the time, it's about making sure you're climbing your family tree and not someone else's. Because it's really easy to just copy information and then th and without taking the time to analyze it, we could end up attaching the wrong parents and climbing up some entirely different family tree that has nothing to do with really us and our ancestors. 
Um, that didn't used to be that big of a deal. Like if you wanted to do you and do your family tree the way you wanted to do it, go at it. But with DNA now, what we're seeing is if your tree is inaccurate, you get your DNA results back and they don't make any sense to you. So unless your tree data is accurate, marrying that with the DNA data is gonna be a really frustrating exercise. So the more clean and accurate your tree information is, the more successful and productive you're going to be with utilizing your DNA results to continue to move your research forward. Okay, let's wrap up with just talking about a couple of quick ways to clean how, uh, ways to clean up your family tree. One is to review your list of all people. So when you are in your tree, um, whether you're doing it from a profile page, here you have the list of all people, or whether you are doing it from the tree page, over here you're gonna have the list of all people. Go to that list of all people. Basically what it is is it's an alphabetical list of individuals, so here are all the people in my tree. It's got birth dates and places and death dates and places. This is a really quick, easy way to just kind of skim through the data in your tree and see, do I have accurate dates? Do I have complete locations? You know, what information am I entirely missing? Here's an individual with a name and no dates at all. Do I need to maybe go spend a little time looking into her and why she's in my tree? One of the other things that sometimes happens that we need to clean up is we end up with floaters, people in our tree who were attached and then we realized, oh, they're not the right person. And so we maybe deleted a relationship or deleted the person, but maybe there were a couple of other people attached to them and those people are now sticking out in our tree as floaters. Um, this is one of the ways to identify those as well. So going through these lists of all people um, kind of gives you a framework a little bit for working with some of those. Another really great way to spot errors in your tree is to just print out a copy of your family tree. Look for missing dates, missing places, missing um, people, missing relationships, right? Look for incomplete information or inconsistent information. Now, your family tree, of course, is typically just going to be you and your ancestors. So you, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, and so on. So you'll be missing out on all the, those siblings in each of those families. And those people are just as important to telling the family story and to identifying the correct information. But um, printing out that copy of your family tree is going to be beneficial. There are a couple of ways, again, to do that. From the tree view, you can just click on the print button over here and that will help print that information. Another way to print your tree is to come up here to the extras, go to photo books and posters. In that process, we'll walk you through a little wizard of creating a printable family tree, and then you can just uh, print that out that way as well. That, that view in includes a little bit more information. This view is a little bit more standardized, so entirely up to you how you choose to do that. And then finally, um, another way to do that is to use a software program. Many software programs like Family Tree Maker, which I still use every day, um, many of those software programs have utilities that are designed specifically to help you clean up your family tree. They have functions, for example, that allow you to check for duplicates. So I can come in here to Family Tree Maker and there is a feature here specifically under the edit menu to find duplicate people. And it will actually churn through my entire family tree and I've got a fairly large tree and it will give me suggestions of people that it thinks are duplicates. And then I can go through and review each of those and decide to merge them or not. It's a pretty quick uh, process depending on the size of your tree. Another thing that most software programs have is some kind of a way to run data error reports. I've done an entire video on the data error reports available through Family Tree Maker, so I would encourage you to go to the Ancestry YouTube channel and check that out and see if you can find that. But coming in here to the data error report just allows me to go through and, and find anybody where the child was born after the parent died or anybody where um, they were, you know, their dates don't make sense or the relationships don't make sense or I've got weird characters in the name field that could be causing me some problems or any number of things um, that data error report can check for. And then I can just print that out and I've done this, I, I do this probably about every three to six months. I'll run one of those data error reports, I'll print it out and I'll set it on my desk and then every time I have 10 or 15 minutes uh, that I don't really want to dive into research but I just want to go through and clean up some of my tree, 
um, I'll pick up that list and I'll run through some of those things and check them off as I fix them. It's a really easy way, just like cleaning my house, to make sure that things stay fairly neat all the time if I just dedicate a little bit of time to it um, You know, when I have that time instead of worrying about doing the massive spring cleaning project. Um, that's how I prefer to do it. You might prefer the spring cleaning, but either way, I hope that you will look at your data, make sure that it's clean, make sure that it's working for you, make sure that you're consistent, because all of those things are going to make this experience a lot more enjoyable for you. It's also going to make it a lot more more successful for you and as always it's going to help you make sure that you're climbing your family tree and not somebody else's until next time this is Krista Cowan have fun climbing your family tree